Welcome to this brief screencast on our first abstract data type, the list. So we know we have all sorts of lists we use a lot of times. We have you know, a grocery list to keep track of what we want to buy, where we need to get it. We have a bucket list of all the things we want to do before we get old and crusty. Um, and we just keep track. And the list is a very valuable um, data structure that we use to help solve problems. We can model actual lists that we use in the real world. We could also use it as just a container for things and it's got some very nice characteristics. So the principal characteristics of a list is first off that items in the list have a position. So they are ordered in the list. That doesn't mean that the list is sorted, it just means there's a first thing in the list, there's a second thing in the list, there's a third thing in the list. The second principle, and this having a position allows us to get to things in the list. So you can say, give me the third thing. You don't have to start at the first and go to the second and then go to the third. You can start and get any one sort of random access into the items in the list. Lists have size. So you can say, hey, list, how big are you? How many items are in there? Lists can grow and shrink. So unlike arrays in Java, Java arrays have a fixed size. They cannot grow and shrink. You have to create a new array and copy things over. or to shrink it, you also have to make a smaller array and then copy the things you want to copy. So, but lists can grow and shrink automatically. And lastly, when you shrink some, a list, they don't have any gaps. Or when you add things to a list, there's no gaps. So you have to have a first thing, a second thing, a third thing. You don't have a gap in the middle of the list. So this is a very powerful data structure. It's great for storing data. Um, so here is the list interface the Java interface. So we have a public interface list and we see that it's a generic interface. That E allows us to instantiate a list for specific types. You can have a list of strings, you can have a list of cars, you can have a list of people, you can have a list of integers, you can have a list of doubles. And you can't stick an int into a double, you can't put a car into a person so we can have type safety on our list. So there are seven methods in the general interface. The first three talk about the position of the items. So you can say, I want to get the item at the index, which returns the item at the given position. I can set an item at the given index, which is I want to replace what is in the list with a new item. I'm not adding a new item, I'm replacing it. I'm getting rid of the old one and I'm putting in the new one. And I can say, where is this thing in the list? So I can say, is this, where is, where is the index? What's the position of this object? Lists have size, so you can ask a list, hey, how many items do you have? And then we can grow and shrink our list by adding, using the add method, which takes a single parameter, adds at the end of the list, so that's going to be at the end. We can add in the middle by using the add that takes two parameters, the index of where I want to put the element and the element I'm putting it there. And when I do that, it shifts all the items from that index to the end over one. So we increment their index. And then we can remove an item at a given index, which is removing it from the list. And again, we have to shift all the items that are at the index plus one onto the size because we don't have any gaps. So I'm going to show you some of these with a general description. Again, here's, they have no gaps. So here's my list. It's called my list. It's got four items in it, foobar, baz, and quax. I call get to, and that's because we're computer sciences. That's going to be the third item in the list because we start with zero. And so it's going to return baz. So it returns baz. So if I say get four, which is beyond the end, you know, size is four. I don't have anything at four. I throw an index out of bounds exception. So the list will say, nope, there's nothing there. I threw an index out of bounds. Four is not a valid index. And then I want to go and say set. I want to change bar to Bob. So I say set one to Bob. So I, right now, before I execute this, it's got bar. After I execute it, bar is no longer in the list and it's been replaced with Bob. And then I can say, what is the index of Quox? And then it comes back and I'll say it's third because I found it in the list. Normally we do a linear search for its top and go down from zero to the end. You can go the other way, you 
do any kind of search, but normally we do a linear search through the list. And then if I say, what's the index of bar? Bar isn't in the list anymore. So I return a negative one, indicating that the index of bar is a negative number, which cannot be a valid index indicates, because I know that a negative value is not in the array or in the list. So that indicates that bar is not in the list. So the negative one indicates it's not there. Otherwise, it's going to return the index of the item. So again, lists have a size. The size method for my list returns four because I have four items in it. Um, I have, I can add, so things can add. So I said my list add Zob, so it had four items in it. Zob will be added to the end of the list and the list size automatically is incremented, so it returns five. So we always get the correct size of our list. I can run the other add method that says I want to add foobar at position two. So what I have to do is I need to put foobar at two, but then I got to move Baz, Quox, and Zob down and make the increment their index. So you can see how Baz is now three, Quox is four, Zob is five, and foobar is at two. We also, the size gets updated because we have six items in our list. So size automatically keeps track of how many items in the list. Um, I can remove something. So if I want to remove Bob, I say remove one. So I remove it, but we can't have any gaps in our list. So we need to shift all four of those guys up one and decrement their position. So we move it up, we decrement the positions, and so now our list has, doesn't have Bob anymore, and it doesn't have any gaps, and we're okay. And then if we ask the size, it returns five. So size keeps track of how many things are in there. The, we can add to it, we can remove it, we can get items at it. So here are the principal characteristics of the list again. We have a position, we have a size, we can grow and shrink, and we don't have any gaps. A list is a great data structure for holding things because you can get to them, the things in the middle, you can ask, is this thing in the list? So it's a very, very handy data structure to use if you want to keep track of things. Just add it to the list. If you don't care about the order, you can just add it at the end. If you care about order, you can sort them to keep them sorted if you so desire. They're just very valuable and helpful data structures to use. Thank you very much.